Hello and welcome to a very special video today because we're going to be taking a look at Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean Rise of Ronin. I would like to play Ghost of Tsushima again, but I think, uh, yeah, we have Rise of Ronin at home, so I think I'm just going to go and play that. It's, it's almost just as good. How's it going? Welcome back to another great video with the Majestic host, The Savior. It's great to have you here. And I'm very excited to be talking about this because I love Japan. And if you're not aware, I'm literally living in Yokohama right now. We don't get many samurai games, okay? We don't get many older period Japanese history period games, okay? Ghost of Tsushima was a masterpiece. It was, mwah, it was the chef's kiss and it was just perfect, but this is a very interesting period of Japanese history that we're exploring in this game. Don't be fooled, this is not going to be a history accurate video game because uh, you'll be using flamethrowers and all kinds of crazy stuff, but still the idea of a game set in the Meiji period is very interesting. I'm not gonna ramble on about Japanese history, uh, check out my Bushido philosophy video, which I worked really hard on. If you're curious about the kind of philosophical aspects of Japan, and you can check out some of my Japanese vlogs, which I do occasionally. But the Meiji period is super interesting because basically that is when Japan was starting to get slightly westernized. And um, yeah, it's just a super cool setting for a game because you're mixing guns and still, you know, sword play. So of course, that's very interesting from a gameplay standpoint. So today I'm going to be giving you this Rise of the Ronin review, and I'm very excited about this because like I said, we don't get many games, um, especially set in this period, and especially since this is made by the same people who made Neo, okay? And their games are some of the best in the Souls-like uh, genre, I would say. Uh, probably next to Lies of P. Lies of P taking it a little bit above, I would say. But after that, they are definitely third place in my books. But um, sadly, this just uh, is not what I hoped for. And I think you're going to hear a lot of content creators say the same thing. But I do think Team Ninja here is offering something unique. Because it's a nice blend of an open world kind of Ghost of Tsushima type gameplay vibe and layout although not done as well, which I'm going to get into. And of course, their kind of Souls-like combat all mixed into this open world format. I can see the vision of this puzzle, but the problem is the pieces that, you know, are a part of the greater puzzle, if you will, are just lacking. Let us not forget the pain of Master Shoin and the countless others who have suffered. <laughs> And if you're just a fan of Japanese culture and Japanese history, of course there will be something to love in this game, and it's not a bad game, but it just doesn't... It could have been so much better, that's why it's so frustrating. So let's just get into it, enough with the babble, enough with the long intro. All I ask before we jump straight into this Rise of the Ronin review is that you do subscribe. It only takes you two seconds, but it just means absolutely everything to me. You might even get a gold-plated PS5, which has been literally defecated on by Mr. Beast himself, if you subscribe. I mean, wow, guys, you don't want to miss out on this competition here, okay? This video needs at least 100 likes, or I will commit seppuku, okay? I, I'm very close to it, guys. Today, I just bought my most terminally ill fan his replacement heart. Oh my god. Is that Mr. Beast? This kid looks sick as heck, dude. Bruh. I'm not gonna give you any of that, okay? But I do just humbly ask that you do consider subscribing. If you are new, we do game reviews and we do yearly reviews of games, older games, and bring them up to date for the year give it a new twist, a new perspective, and I also cover philosophical videos, gaming and philosophy, that's what we do here. So subscribe, become a wise one, join this community, I'm so proud of what we're building here. It's a slow build up, but I just love every step of it, and I love seeing 
you know, the same people leaving comments down below, really trying to create something for you guys as well and bringing back old school YouTube. That's what I'm all about. So please do support me. Consider dropping a donation, a thanks. That's how I can do this as an independent, smaller creator and just join this community, become a wise one. And I can't wait to have you with us. So with all that, let's take a look at Rise of the Ronin. So here we are, Rise of the Ronin game review. Let's go, baby. I'm so, so excited to look at this. Now, before we get straight into this, positives and negatives, that's what I do, that's my system here with early reviews, yearly reviews, I just uh, talk about the game because I usually love it. But these uh, early reviews, early access reviews, okay, um, a lot of people had a problem with how I title these before, so I'm changing it up from now on. It's always going to be early access reviews for newer games just coming out because I base my early access reviews on hands on that I get, codes that I get sent, and if I can't get the code, then I do extensive research and uh, give you all of the information before release because we just don't know with the modern day gaming industry, we get so many broken releases nowadays, so many scum. Corporations, companies only caring about profit, gaming has become all about marketing and showing false gameplay most of the time or buying off, you know, shills and uh, these fake YouTubers or these big outlets like IGN, which of course have an agenda. So this is Rise of the Ronin review, but it is based on early gameplay. So the first positive slash minus of Rise of the Ronin, I would say, is the combat itself. Now, Team Ninja and the Neo games and all that kind of stuff have always been known for great combat because they've kind of tried to emulate the Souls formula but making it much more quicker, a lot more bombastic you could say, similar to Elden Ring with a lot more combinations, weapon variations, weapon uh, movesets that are unique, all of that good stuff which I absolutely love, that's why their games are great. But honestly I do feel that Ghost of Tsushima does a way better job here uh, compared to this game because uh, it does feel a little bit more simplistic and I think that is because they were worried about, you know, basically all of their games being Souls-likes, okay? That's what they were known for. Um, not just that, but that's what they've been known for recently and I think they didn't want people to think, okay, this is going to be, you know, a difficult Souls-like experience. So they did make the weapons a little bit more simplified, a lot more streamlined. There's only a couple of basic attacks you can do and some heavy attacks, stuff like that. And of course, there are special weapon type movesets that you can pull off, but it doesn't feel as like fluid or as organic as something like Ghost of Tsushima, where you're literally switching between different formations uh, with the blade, which just was so good. And I'm not gonna keep comparing it to that game because I understand they are different games, but they are basically trying to do the same thing. So that's why it's very difficult not to compare them. But it is a good uh, combat system. It's just a lot more streamlined. But of course you still do get lots of different weapon variations. Some of them are reused, I've noticed, uh, from Neo. Uh, even the animations, so if that stuff bothers you, then you will, uh, yeah, definitely notice. But the main important thing is, yes, it might not be good as Neo, but the combat here is still fun. That's the most important thing. This is still a fun combat system. You get some flashy moves where you flick the blood off your blade and stuff like that. Now, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I thought I was going slightly insane, but a lot of people also noticed the PS2 horses. Yes, that's right. We've got PS2 horses in this game, guys, uh, which is very fun. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, honestly, like Shadow of the Colossus, uh, the original, did horses uh, way more realistically than this. Um, this just doesn't feel like a next-gen game. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. And that brings me on to my next point, which is a negative, sadly. I don't know why I'm holding Pikachu's head like a goddamn psychopath. But um, yeah, the visuals, okay? This is not a good looking game. I don't care people trying to sugarcoat it. Oh, it's not that bad. It's not, you know, it's perfectly fine. What has... <coughs> I'm just, whoa. I'm just getting a little bit crazy over here because We've been conned, boys. We've been conned. This generation is a goddamn shit show. It's a goddamn 
fabrication. It's 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 magic. It's it's a fairy dust, guys. Because this generation has been absolute shit. What the hell's happened? The PS5, a powerful goddamn console, the Xbox Series X, I don't care where you stand, what little fan club you join, they're both good consoles, okay? But they are powerful consoles, and we should be able to handle ray tracing, we should be able to handle 60 FPS, but no, we're getting games like Dragon's Dogma 2, which I'm very excited about, but it's running at a, you know, low FPS, it's going to dip below 30 very often, um, and then we're getting an exclusive PS5 game like this, but it looks worse, <laughs> it looks worse than a game that came out at the end of the PS4 life cycle. Just think about that for a second. Does that make sense to you? Standards have fallen, we didn't really need this generation, it was basically just a marketing lie because it's all bullshit pretty much, there's only a couple of games with ray tracing, etc. And I'm sorry if you did, and you know, don't worry guys, I've been conned as well, so don't think, you know, I'm judging you if you bought a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. I'm just saying developers don't know how to utilize next gen. That's why everything is still releasing on the PS4 as well. But this is a PS5 exclusive, but it looks worse than Ghost, okay? Which is pretty insane to me. Every developer is going to be different, and I still do believe that graphics do not matter. Gameplay first, always, that's the most important thing. And it is very fluid, I do have to say that. It is like 60 FPS all the time, but still, a game that is an open world game, you know, you want beautiful scenery in an open world game, and it just fails on that regard compared to something like Ghost, it just doesn't look that interesting, the open world, there's so many reused assets, um, and it just looks kind of barren, and it's just a big shame because a lot of the vegetation has pop in, a lot of it feels like very jaggy, um, you know, with anti-aliasing and stuff like that, and I don't usually care about graphics, like I said, gameplay first, but when you're, you know, making a historic piece, like, set in the Meiji period, I really want to feel immersed in that world space, but sadly, it just all feels very gamified, it feels like this is all just video game assets instead of a real world. Um, so that is a negative for me, I've got to say, because in an open world game, um, visuals, or at least art style matters. The next point is a negative, and there is still some really cool things that I'm going to get into, lots of positives. There's lots to love about this game, um, like the crime system, which I didn't expect, and so much more. The next negative is the fact that they went for the Ubisoft style open world approach, and that was very disappointing to see. For example, you're climbing up this tower, and what's up there? It's a fucking cat. How did it get up there? I don't know, is it, is it, has it been bitten by a radioactive spider? Maybe, it's possible, anything's possible nowadays. But um, they went for this kind of checklist approach when it came to open world activities, and to me that's the biggest letdown here, okay? A lot of the activities are very boring. Basically we've played this game before, we've played it before guys, we've played it many times before. Go up to a tower, activate a flag, do some uh, gallery shooting, fly through hoops guys remember remember flying through hoops like in hogwarts legacy because that isn't a goddamn played out mechanic when you just don't have anything interesting going on in the open world i mean stuff like that is just sad okay um and i'm sorry but that's just my opinion if you like that type of gameplay if you like that type of um you know checklist design approach where you get a massive checklist, you open up a map and you see all of the shit that you can go and do, but it's all just recycled content. Fair enough, okay? I'm sure you love Assassin's Creed, and that's fine. Everyone has their own different tastes, but I'm sick of it. I'm done with it. I'm, I don't want to... I, I, uh, I don't understand why we can't move on from that, guys, okay? This is 2024, um, and we need new innovative gaming mechanics in our open world. We need them to feel organic. We need, uh, you know dynamic events like Dragon's Dogma 2, dynamic story missions that just happen to us while we're in an open world. We need to start using uh, our future destruction to our advantage, implement proper good AI systems into the games now because we have the potential where AI can think and, you know, dynamically tell stories now. So why aren't we utilizing that in games? But no, it's the same checklist design approach and, you know, <laughs> I mean, these are right next to each other. Hold a cat and activate a flag. I mean, what the fuck? Now, now hear me, hear me, are you listening? Calm down in the comments, okay? I want you to subscribe, <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, I'm not shitting on this game. If you're excited about this, that's all fine. You know, we all have different tastes and there's still a lot to love about this. I just haven't got to it yet, okay? So now let's get into the positives, shall we? Because there are a lot of positives. 
This isn't a bad game, it's not like Forspoken, okay, where it's just kind of rotten to the core. No, there are good things about this game. And the combat, like I said, um, that is fun. It does, you know, have a nice progression path to it. And, you know, there are so many different weapons that you can choose from. Um, and they all play differently. That's really fun, just to experiment with the different weapons and master one. A big positive that did surprise me a lot was the fact that actually we have a reputation system in this game, uh, which was quite a shocker to find out. So basically, if you, you know, complete all of the activities in a certain area, your rep will increase with this certain area, and uh, basically you will get benefits from vendors and unlock new side missions, all that kind of good stuff. So I do like that. It's kind of like a morality system similar to Fallout, um, or I guess kind of like Red Dead Redemption, but it actually matters here. Um, there's actual gameplay implications with this, which I really like. Um, but not just that, okay? There's actually a whole crime system in this game, similar to something like GTA to a degree, um, which is pretty cool. So it does give you that freedom. It does really feel like you're living in an open, you know, sandbox in a samurai setting in this, you know, Meiji period um, in Japan, which is super cool because Ghost never allowed you to do whatever the hell you wanted. You can't just go and slaughter innocents, but if you want to do that in this game, you can. And this then leads into the big thing that I actually love about this game. The one thing that I really love about this game, not just like, I, I, I just wish they really narrow focused, I just wish they really focused in upon this and they made the whole game more about this because then I can overlook some of its shortcomings and that is the story, okay? The big positive here is the fact that there's actual choices and consequences in this game. It feels really like a proper, you know, Japanese RPG and that to me is what made me immersed in this game. I, you know, it made me overlook the visuals, it made me overlook some of the other open world side mission content. But the fact that you craft and create your own story, that's what's fun about this game. And it was surprising with how much detail and how much uh, consequence there actually is to the side content. Choices carry weight in this game when you have the option to, you know, punish someone or to forgive them. These actually have repercussions later down the line. The same with just smaller side content with some of them. What I love about the side missions now is that there's actually morality at play here. It's not just good and evil, there is a lot of grey in between in which you have to decide, you know, what is the correct decision here. And I really like that. I love games like that. I love, you know, games like Fallout New Vegas, for example, or The Witcher when you're, you know, meeting interesting characters, interesting side missions, but they basically are their own miniature story and they actually have, you know, different endings depending on what you choose. That was really surprising and that's where I feel like this game, you know, stands apart from something like Ghost because it's trying to really be a RPG set in this period. And if they focused more on that, and maybe they do later on, I hope so, then this game is going to be a treat. And it's just so cool that there's actual consequences now, you know, if you want to go and slaughter an entire village, then you will be hunted down by other samurai, um, and then you will have to, you know, face them off. I was expecting Rise of the Ronin to be just a simple open world, you know, samurai game, basically trying to emulate Ghost, but actually, you know, with like a Neo combat system, um, and that's the only thing that made it different. But actually, surprisingly, like I said, it's the details in this game that blew me away. Not so much the graphical detail or the kind of world and the immersion that the world gives me, but the gameplay mechanics. For example, the choices and consequences, and even the fact that you can actually have different dialogue choices, you know, that actually matter. They aren't just, you know, flavor text. Um, this is a proper RPG to some degree, and I really like the flexibility here, the way that you can actually create your character. You're not this one set character. You can customize your character and really make it feel like your own uh, story. And to me, that's what really saved this game. And I think that's what a lot of people are going to enjoy about this game. It's, you know, you making this your story. It's not a story, you know, already scripted and told for you. And that's why I think this game is going to be good, even though there's a few things that I don't like about it. But that and the combat system keeps it from feeling just a generic open world game, even though it does have those pieces in the puzzle. Um, 
that take away from the experience, like these generic side content, you can just ignore that if you want and just do these side missions. What I really like about Rise of the Ronin is, you know, when you need to progress the storyline, you will most likely need to be a certain, you know, power level, okay? And you will be facing bosses in this game. That is a big uh, pull to this. You know, they haven't forgotten about that. It is still the good combat system of Neo at heart, and they haven't forgot, you know, that they are really good at designing boss encounters and all that kind of stuff. That's still all in here, so that's really good. But I like the fact that they give you flexibility in how you want to progress. You know, if you want to go the route of kind of recruitment and building up your own miniature little posse and party um, that will help you in combat, you can do that. Or you can just be like a, you know, solo ronin, uh, you know, a samurai for hire and just go around doing side missions or just killing lots of people and getting better that way, you know, progressing your skill level and your equipment. There's lots of ways to progress and then the gameplay systems actually react to you in the world. That is what makes this game cool. I just wish it was much more immersive, much more detailed in its world, much more believable with the characters and its setting, but the gameplay mechanics here are pretty, pretty good. So that is my Rise of the Ronin review, my Rise of the Ronin game review. And I think that what I said here will be shared with the community, especially people who absolutely loved Ghost. Um, and I think that the other Rise of the Ronin reviews will either praise this game or they will actually hate it. I don't think this is going to be just a middle of the road game. Some people are really gonna love it, especially fans of the Neo series, but also it does pull away some of the special aspects that made those games so beloved in the first place with the kind of crazy mystical elements that might come later, I don't know, but it doesn't look like it. It's trying to be much more grounded and realistic with its storytelling. Um, like I said, the cutscenes, the voice acting, all that stuff, I didn't really touch upon it because, um, you know, I haven't seen the full story as of yet. It's, you know, serviceable, but I wouldn't say it really pulls me in, um, of course, and especially the English voice acting um, is not that great. They just missed a couple of steps, like Joe Biden, okay? Uh, <laughs> Uh, if they just really double down on making it a full RPG and telling your own story, that's the aspect that I really like. Um, and they just made the world more immersive, um, visually and interesting to explore with the side content and exploration content. Then this game would be a masterpiece and a real, uh, you know, competitor to Ghost. But as it stands, it feels like it's got a bit of an identity crisis. It's trying to borrow elements from Ubisoft open world, uh, you know, game design philosophy, and that's because they haven't really made an open world game before, so it's understandable that they are just going with the safe bet, I guess. Um, but there are things that I really do like about this game, so I think it's going to be kind of like Marmite. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. And if you're not British, you're not going to understand that reference. But anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this Rise of the Ronin review. I'm mixed on it. I think this is going to be a perfect game to get uh, on sale, honestly. Um, and I will be playing it, but I'm not, you know, eager to jump into it, you know, day one. So I do hope you enjoyed this review of Rise of the Ronin, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Have yourselves a great day. Make sure that you do subscribe and share this video around. If you are new, I would appreciate it, and it's just great to have new people join the channel, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace out.